Alora is always a town mentioned in countless top 10 lists that rank the cutest towns in Ontario. I've always known about it, and I've especially heard spectacular things about its iconic luxury boutique hotel that occupies a former abandoned mill. One that's beautifully perched above a waterfall. So let's check into this stunning property and find out if our suite, which happens to be one of the most expensive hotel rooms you can get in the entire area, is actually worth the price. The town of Alora isn't far from the largest city in Canada, around an hour and a half's drive, and it's also close to other cities like Kitchener and Hamilton, the latter being where I'm from. The town is very small, containing a population of only 7,700 people, but that obviously skyrockets in the summer as regional tourists flood the area. And it's easy to see why, as it's a beautiful town with highly manicured quaint shops and the Grand River running right through it, ultimately turning into a waterfall and gorge as it cascades alongside Mill Street. It's also a historic town, as many of its structures date all the way back to the mid-1800s. One of those is the Old Mill. It was constructed in 1859 after the first structure had burned down. It served as a sawmill for several decades thereafter, a prominent industrial building in the heart of Alora. Ultimately, it closed down, and because of its unique position on the crest of the town's waterfall, it was converted into a hotel in 1974. The Alora Mill Country Inn and Restaurant, as it was then known as, was a cute little hotel. By the early 2000s, rooms were going for around $290 adjusted for inflation. While that doesn't seem too bad, the quality of the hotel was charming, let's say. It was clearly a small operation, but likely an expensive one, and by the late 2000s, it was eating through any of the hotel's profits. Ultimately, the property would sink deeper into debt and was unable to keep the structure up to date. It closed in 2010, and the site was put up for sale. The building was ultimately purchased by Pearl Hospitality, who probably got it at an enormous discount. Pearl has been known for purchasing historic and scenic buildings and renovating them into high-quality restaurants, hotels, and banquet halls. They've been so successful with the strategy that they've now expanded into new builds and even residential development. In fact, they were just named as the leading developer behind the abandoned power plant in Niagara Falls, finally proposing an actual luxury hotel in the area. So following their purchase, the Alora Mill actually sat abandoned for the better part of six years, presumably while Pearl allocated the cash for the massive investment needed. Finally though, construction got underway in late 2016, and the Alora Mill Hotel and Spa opened up in July of 2018. In the end, the company spent around $27 million for the whole project. I decided to book our accommodations on a chilly fall night in their highest room category, the Solarium Suite. Upon entry, you'll notice that this room is massive. It features three separate rooms, a huge bathroom, a bedroom, and a living room. Now, that bathroom is absolutely decked out with a freestanding bathtub with a view, a private toilet room, double vanity with real marble, and an absolutely enormous shower. I think it's actually the largest shower I have ever seen. While it is lined with real limestone, presumably an authentic wall from the original structure, it is so comically large that it could use a bench or a rainfall shower head. But the other amenities in this bathroom do make up for it, as the tiles are heated and controlled by a touchscreen panel. Plus, there's also a heated towel rack. The soap products smell fantastic, and you do also get bath salts for the tub, as well as a Dyson hairdryer which is a first for me in a luxury hotel. All very upscale. The bedroom also carries on with this elevated feel. You get plenty of closet space along with a refrigerator stocked with complimentary drinks, including water, thank you, and also these fantastic chips made locally. Something I really appreciate was that this hotel offered turndown service, and they actually restocked all of this, including the chips in the evening. The bed was pretty comfortable, as were the sheets. The nightstand had motion-detected lights that would turn on if it sensed you were getting out of bed. And the windows can be opened, allowing the crisp air and incredible sound of the waterfall to consume the space. Finally, there's the living room solarium. When Pearl began their renovations to the hotel, they added a steel structure that jets out of the mill, facing the gorge. It extends out a couple feet, and you can actually see the original exterior wall of the mill structure. 
This new addition is the living area for this room, and it's obviously adorned with floor-to-ceiling windows that, in this case, provide corner views of the waterfall in all of its glory. Now, there are thick curtains that bunch up at this corner, but if you move them out of the way, you really have a unique perspective over the waterfall. But even normally, this view is stunning as you're cantilevered right over the waterfall, at least 100 feet up. Now, on the other side of the Grand River, there's a new condo building that's going up, also being developed by Pearl. I'll be honest, especially in its current state of construction, it does eliminate a significant amount of privacy you'd get if it wasn't there. And really, it is a bit of an eyesore right now. This is a temporary thing, at least to some degree, and while it is a pretty daunting structure across a rather small river, I think the uniqueness of the view is never really lost, and you can still easily sit in this living room for hours, mesmerized by the flow of the water. This is also a great space outside of the windows as well, with comfortable couches, a desk with a high quality speaker, and another large TV with a Roku box. You also get a real wood-burning fireplace, which the hotel will set up for you free of charge. Like I mentioned earlier, this room is the highest category in the whole hotel, and there are only three of these solarium suites. They make up the top of this glass enclosure. Now something to note is that all three of these are priced exactly the same, regardless if you're getting the corner room or not. So if you do want one, particularly this one, you will need to request it. If you look at a layout of this floor, you can see all three of these rooms and how differently they're laid out. That actually applies to the vast majority of the suite options at this hotel, as basically all of the rooms are unique in their own way. Whether it's the shape of them or how they're decorated, most themed between rustic, modern, or French. Now, a category below this is the James Ross House. Basically, an entire house that's situated at the front gates of the hotel. It too was abandoned at one point. Two bedroom loft rooms are also offered, the only category that sleeps more than two people. Below that are the terrace suites that have outdoor patios with fireplaces and are situated above the solarium rooms. There's also some river view balcony rooms, some terrace suites, and the regular mill rooms, which are the lowest category you can get here. But even with the cheapest room, you can still get access to all of the amenities here. Primarily, that's the spa. There's actually a whole separate structure which is also historic and was built in the 1840s. Inside is a vast complex of spa and fitness options. Now, obviously massages and other treatments do cost money, but there's also a lot of complimentary offerings for guests. There is a rather small gym with a surprisingly limited selection of equipment, but the outdoor terrace just beyond the doors kind of makes up for it. Elsewhere is a scenic relaxation room with floor-to-ceiling windows and a tea room where you can make your own teas along with complimentary cookies. You can also order food off a special menu and enjoy it here for lunch. There's also infused waters, fruit, and a dry sauna. In each changing room, there's a steam sauna, and once you come out, they give you quite possibly the most comfortable robes I have ever felt. Outside, on the upper terrace, is the pool area. Throughout the season, the main pool is heated, but if you want to warm up even more, there's also a hot tub that overlooks the waterfall. The special touch for all of this wasn't just the outdoor fireplaces, but was the complimentary warm apple cider, which was absolutely superb. Back over in the main building and across from the lobby is the restaurant. We ate there for dinner and had pretty high expectations given Pearl's other restaurants around southern Ontario. We got the daily cut of beef for two, which was a sizable steak that was cooked to perfection. It came with a bunch of sides which were overall pretty great, except for the polenta fries, which were extremely salty. So much so that they were just too much to finish. The total cost for two people was $150 before tip. And given our seat right at the edge, overlooking the waterfall, the warm atmosphere and great service, I don't think that's too astonishingly overpriced. Now, the kitchen for this restaurant is placed on the other side of the lobby and actually has big open windows for anyone to look inside. Alora Mill also offers what they call the kitchen counter experience, where you can literally sit in the kitchen and enjoy a curated tasting experience. A level below the lobby is a cozy bar that incorporates some of the old piping into the bar rack. There's also some comfortable lounge seating, a fireplace, and a meeting room. Below that is the new addition, as the hotel has recently renovated the basement storage room into a wine cellar where you can do tastings or host an event. They also offer some complimentary amenities as well, like these bikes to take around town, and during the holidays, Charles Dickens' storytelling in the lobby. Perhaps the greatest amenity here, though, is the town of Alora itself. 
It is shockingly beautiful and filled with charm and little nooks to explore. We happen to have been staying here right on Halloween night, and throughout the season the town sets up these spooky art pieces made by local artists. I mean, Alora is home to some great restaurants, extremely cute cafes and boutiques, a film festival, street events, and scenic views. Which on a side note, the Lost and Found Cafe just a few steps from the hotel is not only beautiful, but also has the best yogurt parfait I think I've ever had. The whole town is just really the whole package, and it really is an extension of the mill itself. So it's no wonder that when they first announced the mill's renovation, they also unveiled big plans for the other side of the river. Phase 2 of Pearl's plan is to build a condo building, which at the time of this video is nearing completion. After that, they plan to build out a pretty large mixed-use development, including more hotel rooms. They've already constructed the pedestrian bridge, and after doing some reading and talking to some of the residents of Alora, I think the consensus is that this is all a necessary evil. Yes, it may bring even more people to the town and drive up real estate prices and congestion, but it also brings economic fuel to the town, and from my perspective, this all looks pretty spectacular, especially from a walkability perspective. I think there's also something to be said on how expensive it is to stay downtown here. And if they do plan to add more hotel rooms, well, it becomes the economy of scale, and it should be more affordable to visit. The mill has proven to be an integral part of the town's DNA, and I think after experiencing all of the little touches here, I came out with an overwhelmingly positive stance. It really is the small things, like the staff sending you a greeting over text, or having a handwritten note waiting for you in your room. I was even impressed to see them handing out legit candy apples to kids on Halloween. It's not a corporate goliath that has a luxury hotel division, this is a boutique special occasion hotel. And it's priced that way. So remember, we got the most expensive room here, and after taxes, our total stay came out to be $1,300 Canadian, right on the dot. Now, that is a lot of money. In fact, it's probably one of the most expensive hotel rooms in all of Ontario. But you certainly don't have to go for this room. Even the full house on the property is cheaper than what we got, starting at around $1,050 a night, while those terrace suites come in at around $900. For my money, I would actually go for those over what we got. The cheapest river balcony rooms start at $750, and the cheapest overall category here comes in at a base $550. Thankfully, Alora Mill doesn't have insane dynamic pricing, so these rates stay pretty consistent, and there are several discounts or promotions over the slower season. As you've probably guessed though, prices do rise a couple hundred dollars more for the larger suites during peak summer months. So let's break all of this down and give it a Jake's Is It Any Good score. We'll start with the location. Putting it into context of where this hotel is and what you want to do around it, I literally cannot think of a better place for it to go. It's centrally located in the town and is on a waterfall. Of course, it's a 10 out of 10. I think amenities are pretty great as well. You have a well-respected restaurant, a full spa, a bar, a lounge, plenty of upcharge experiences, but more importantly, complimentary ones too, with small touches here and there. I think it's only missing a more extensive gym, and that's really it. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. As for quality and luxury, you can tell that real thought and effort went into everything here. Materials feel authentic and high quality, and guests are provided with exceptional, well-crafted rooms. Where it lacks in grandiose opulence, it makes up for in small details, and only misses in a few aspects for this price range. It's a 9 out of 10. Service is likewise fantastic. Everyone we met was very nice to us, and offered to accommodate us in various ways. It's another 9 out of 10. Finally, there's value. It's really hard to compare this with any other property, since there really is nothing else like it. And it does offer so much, despite the objectively high price point. But with the beautiful view, the unique perspective, and the history behind it, I think it does soften the blow a little bit on how much it all costs. I think it would be fair to give it an 8 out of 10, ultimately giving the Alora Mill Hotel and Spa a fantastic score of 44 out of 50. That makes this the highest score I have yet to give anything on this channel. In the end, I think this was a spectacular project by Pearl Hospitality. 
and they absolutely nailed what a boutique hotel should be. This is a one-of-a-kind property, and it's no wonder why it's such a popular hotel for weddings and other special occasions. As for our room, I think it would be great for those special events. However, because there are so many other rooms at this property that offer a similar experience, I would elect to try one of those and save the money. Especially the Terrace or Juliet balcony rooms, which still provide astonishing views, but at a cheaper price. No matter what though, this was a really excellent hotel in a spectacular location, and I would absolutely recommend it to anyone willing to spend this much money. But even if you don't stay here, visiting Alora is an equally great experience, and I truly can't implore you enough to come see what I'm talking about. Stay tuned for some more reviews coming this year, like a cruise on Celebrity's Edge class, as well as the brand new luxury Oceana Vista, plus a trip to Disney's best resort. There's so much more to come, so do subscribe if you're interested. My name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.